Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're going to be talking about new FSD beta release notes. 10.69.3 has started to roll out to employees, so we'll go through those. Also got news on Tesla in China, a report on the Cybertruck production timeline, some crossover news between Tesla and Twitter, and a few other items as well. Another outperformance for Tesla today, starting to add up a little bit this week. Tesla up a tenth of a percent to close at $227.82 while well, the NASDAQ was down 9 tenths of a percent. But again, probably doesn't matter too much as we head into the FOMC meeting tomorrow. That'll probably be the major determining factor for where the market goes from here. All right, today we're starting off with some FSD beta news. Of course, yesterday we talked about how Tesla had started to push out 10.69.2.4. So no different release notes on that, probably just bug fixes. But at the same time, it looks like Tesla started to push out 10.69.3, a new version out to employees. We've been waiting for this for a couple of weeks, and this version does contain significant changes, which are captured in the release notes, which have leaked, as shown here on Twitter by Holmars. We've got about 15 different bullet points here, and as usual, it's fairly technical in terms of the language. So I think it's very helpful to break these down and put them into broad categories. Of course, there is going to be some overlap between these categories, but chunking them up, I think, makes it a little bit easier for us to dig through and understand what we're really seeing in this update. For me, I'm really seeing four broad categories, performance-related changes, really improving latency and things like that, control, so adjusting things in the planner, and then lanes, and also vulnerable road users or VRUs. So we'll go through those categories, but first just three kind of general bullet points that don't necessarily fit specifically in those categories. Tesla has upgraded the object detection network to photon count video streams and retrained all parameters with the latest auto-label data sets with a special emphasis on low visibility scenarios. So this is a big deal. Elon's talked a lot about this over the last year. This is Tesla bringing in the most unfiltered possible data set that they're getting from their cameras, not doing any post-processing on it, and using that as the input for their object detection neural network. And presumably that gives them the most robust data set to make the best decisions with, and also save some processing where that filtering step might apply otherwise. Last year, Elon described this on Twitter by saying that one of the improvements to FSD Vision involves training with actual photon counts, so removing the filters used to make pictures pretty to the human eye. A common example of that might be an infrared filter, which we wouldn't want to see in our pictures or videos, but could be helpful to the neural network in figuring out what's going on. Around the same time last year, Elon on the Lex Friedman podcast said that this will allow Tesla to see much better in the dark than you could possibly imagine due to small differences in photon counts. So it's a big deal, and Tesla chose to put this bullet point first. It's also exciting that Tesla is using auto-labeling on these raw photon count video stream datasets. That's probably a key factor in even being able to make this change in the first place. All right, the other couple of points in the general category, Tesla says that they have improved the architecture for better accuracy and latency, higher recall of faraway vehicles, lower velocity error for crossing vehicles by 20%, and improved vulnerable road user precision by 20%. I think those ones are pretty self-explanatory. And then finally, in the general category, Tesla upgraded the occupancy network to align with road surface instead of Ego, which is the vehicle, for improved detection stability and improved recall at hill crest. So that one's a little bit trickier just to make my best guess at that. I would imagine that that means that Tesla is kind of anchoring the position of things that are appearing in the occupancy network to the road surface rather than to the vehicle's position, which then, as they say there, seems to improve the stability of the positioning and the recall at Hillcrest when things may be out of vision for a period of time. All right, and more specific categories here, we've got three bullet points on performance-related things, so things that are reducing latency, allowing the system to make quicker decisions. The first one here is an 80% reduction in the runtime of candidate trajectory generations. I believe these would be the generations of the possible paths the vehicle may take. So to achieve this improvement, Tesla says that they have converted an expensive trajectory optimization procedure into a lightweight planar neural network. I think this is exciting because Tesla has talked about using C++ for a lot of the planning and control work. So where Tesla can convert some of those functions to neural networks, there's potential for both better efficiency and better effectiveness. So it sounds like that's what Tesla is achieving here with the trajectory generation. Next performance point, Tesla has converted the non-vulnerable road user attributes network to a two-stage network, which they say has reduced the latency, reduced incorrect lane assignments of crossing vehicles by 45%, and reduced incorrect park predictions by 15%. Finally then, Tesla says that they have reduced the best case input to output or object photon to control system latency by 26% through the combination of adaptive planar scheduling, restructuring of trajectory selection, and parallelizing perception compute. I think that's mostly a summary of some of these other changes, so main point for this category being that Tesla has changed a number of things that will allow Tesla to, as they say here, make quicker decisions and improve reaction time. 
Next, a few bullet points here on control. Tesla's improved control for vehicles cutting out of their desired path by better modeling their turning and lateral maneuvers, thus avoiding unnatural slowdowns. Anytime I see improvements on unnatural slowdowns, that makes me happy. That's probably, as I've said before, my most common intervention. Tesla's also improved longitudinal control while offsetting around static obstacles by searching for feasible vehicle motion profiles. So that would be better control of vehicle speed while going around things that are stationary. And then Tesla also notes improved longitudinal control smoothness for in-lane vehicles during high relative velocity scenarios by also considering relative acceleration in the trajectory optimization. Now, I'm not certain, but I hope, I really, really hope that this means that if there's a vehicle in front of you and it speeds up, that your vehicle will speed up and follow it a little bit more closely by factoring in the time that it takes to get back up to that relatively high velocity. If anyone has a different interpretation of that, please let me know. That would be amazing if that is what that means. Finally, on control, I'm not sure if this really fits into control, or maybe I'm just misinterpreting something here, but Tesla has added control for more precise object geometry as detected by General Occupancy Network. So I guess just improving the controls as Tesla has now moved towards the General Occupancy Network to be more adaptive to the more precise information that Tesla is now getting. All right, last couple of categories here, probably a little bit more self-explanatory. First being lanes. Tesla has reformulated the autoregressive vector lanes grammar which is a fun reminder back to AI Day 2 when Tesla talked about building their lane model off of language models. Anyway, they've improved the precision of lanes by 9%, recall of lanes by 19%, recall of forks by 51%, and they say this includes a full network update where all components were retrained with 3.8 times the amount of data. Tesla has also added a new road markings module to the vector lanes neural network, which improves lane topology error at intersections by 39%. Presumably that means that Tesla is now looking at more things on the road that can be then auto-labeled and used to improve the perception of the lane network. Finally, on lanes, Tesla says they've improved decision-making for short deadline lane changes around gores, which is the triangle area when one road splits into two. So you've got the physical area where those roads split, but then also the markings on the road indicating that that split is coming. Tesla says they now have richer modeling of the trade-off between going off-route so going the wrong way when those splits happen, or the trajectory required to drive through the Gore region. So obviously by that, they're talking about the road markings for the Gore region, but kind of an interesting one here, as I wouldn't think Tesla would be too eager to drive through those very often, even if it seems like it could be accomplished. Anyway, final category here is VRUs, vulnerable road users. Tesla says that they have converted the VRU velocity network to a two-stage network, which reduced latency and improved crossing pedestrian velocity error by 6%, and Tesla's reduced false slowdowns for pedestrians near crosswalks by using a better model for the kinematics of the pedestrian. So I think both of those pretty self-explanatory, but again, anything reducing false slowdowns in a safe way, I think makes the product a lot better. So that's everything in 10.69.3. Definitely seems like a significant update. Hopefully employee testing goes well, and some people outside of Tesla can start to get this version over the next week or so. All right, next up, we've got a bit of an update on Tesla in China. Moneyball on Twitter is reporting that the China insured units for the last week of October here have come in, so October 24th through the 30th, at 8,079 vehicles. If we combine that with previous insured vehicle reports, we can see that October 3rd through the 30th is about 17,300. That's not going to tie perfectly with the retail sales or domestic sales figure that the CPCA reports in a week or so but should be pretty close. Then you also have to factor in October 1st and 2nd and October 31st, which is not covered here, but it gives us a ballpark of somewhere around 20,000 vehicles for domestic sales during the month of October. Now this makes it pretty clear that Tesla is still doing a little bit of that delivery wave type of stuff, but this would be, if it is 20,000, the highest first month of the quarter for domestic sales in China so far. Still, the numbers should be expected to pick up significantly for November and December especially following the price cuts that we saw on October 24th, which, like we talked about, likely chosen by Tesla because they're ready to shift a little bit more of their production back within China. Also Shanghai-related, we've got a report from Bloomberg today that Tesla is sending over a couple hundred workers from Giga Shanghai to Fremont to help improve production at Fremont. I think this is actually pretty exciting because we just saw Giga Shanghai go through their production upgrade very smooth, huge increase in productivity in a very short period of time. Those people have seen that take place or rather have made that happen and hopefully can bring in some insights and improve productivity at Fremont as well. All right, next we've got an update from Reuters on Cybertruck production today. I don't think there's anything really new here. They're reporting that Tesla is aiming to start mass production of the Cybertruck at the end of 2023, according to two people with knowledge of the plans. Now they say mass production here, so I don't think that's really any shift in the timeline. All indications have been the middle of 2023 for the start of production, so 
Of course, it's going to take some time to get that to mass production, which is somewhat of an arbitrary thing anyway. Usually for Tesla, we're talking about that being a 5,000 per week number. That would actually be incredible if Tesla is targeting that for the Cybertruck for the end of 2023. I would be surprised if they could hit a number like that, but this report may not be talking about it in that way anyway. All right, the next Tesla item that's been getting a lot of attention over the last day or so, I've gotten a few questions on this. CNBC has reported that Elon has enlisted some help from about 50 Tesla employees to help out with some of the changes that are going on with Twitter right now. Of course, we've seen on Twitter Elon talking a lot about this today. I think regardless of how you feel about it, it is exciting to see how quickly Elon moves. Regarding Tesla employees helping out for this period of time, though, I don't care about it at all. I trust Elon very much to make the proper organizational decisions that need to be made for both organizations and do so in a way that is not detrimental to Tesla. We've already seen the competition for resources, if you want to frame it that way, between Tesla and SpaceX. There's often crossover work between employees for those two companies, and they manage just fine. Tesla can do the same here with Twitter for a little bit, and eventually that will probably circle back around and Tesla will be able to benefit from Twitter employees. Elon at the top makes that easy to facilitate, and again, I trust Elon to make those proper decisions without harming Tesla, which by the way, Elon's still the biggest shareholder of Tesla, still the majority of his net worth in Tesla, so it's not something that I'm worried about. All right, last few items here. Panasonic has announced yesterday that they are going to start building their new battery plant that we've talked about in Kansas this month. They say that they are aiming to begin mass production by March of 2025. Next, Toyota has reported their fiscal second quarter, so a little bit confusing, but their end of September quarter numbers. And bottom line, their net income, which was 461,303 million yen, which converts over to about 3.1 billion US dollars, was below Tesla's third quarter gap net income of about 3.3 billion dollars. So pretty crazy milestone, especially to be achieved with such a disparity in scale at the moment. But fun to see after all of the criticisms of Tesla being the most valuable automaker over the years. Well, now people are starting to see why that is. Anyway, net income was down 28% year over year for Toyota and earnings per share was down 30%. Looks like the revenue was up 22%, so not exactly sure what's driving such bad profitability. I know they've got foreign exchange headwinds on their cost structure, but without spending more time analyzing it, kind of tough to sort all of those things out. Finally then today, congratulations to SpaceX for the successful flight and landing of the Falcon Heavy for the first time since 2019. Always incredible to see those two boosters come back and land simultaneously, so congrats. And that's where we'll wrap it up for today. So as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, November 2nd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.